Hi guys, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, as uh, my regular viewers will know, I'm starting to talk a little bit more about armour now. Uh, in fact, armour is a subject that I've studied quite a lot um, and I'm quite enthusiastic on, uh, but I just kind of haven't had time to get around to it in my videos uh, so much so far, so I'm now starting to redress that balance of it. So I'm just going to start off, uh, here's a freeze frame from their first season of the show Vikings, and um, I thought it was useful because it shows a topic that is dear to my heart and something that really annoys me in uh, movies and TV shows um, and that is the inaccuracy and sometimes the ridiculous and unnecessary inaccuracy of armour in films and TV. And what we have here is a classic example that you can see in films going back to the 1930s um, and that is the theatrical use of fake mail or fake chain mail. Uh, and this is what is known in uh, reenactment circles as knitted mail or wool mail. Um, and all it is is essentially uh, knitted uh, like, a, like a sweater, jumper, knitted and it's then spray painted with black and essentially dry brushed with, uh, with silver. And it gives an effect that lots of people think looks like mail. In actual fact, it doesn't look like mail much to anybody who's actually seen real mail. And what's really annoying is that this show actually uses mail. They have real mail in it. So the fact that they've elected to use fake knitted mail in a scene that is so clearly focused on someone's face is really, really annoying. Why do you do this, guys? We understand that, you know, budgets are limited and mail is heavier than this knitted stuff and more difficult to maintain, maybe, and maybe more expensive. And, and we understand that you can't maybe equip all of your actors and actresses with mail, okay? However, if you're gonna have a close-up on a guy with a male coif, like here, then use real mail, okay? And there's a classic example in the film Braveheart as well, where um, lots of people in that film do have real mail, but they also have lots of knitted mail. And there's one scene where it, there's a close-up of someone's hand holding the reins of Mel Gibson's horse when he comes to uh, give himself up. Uh, and it's actually a trick and he kills a load of people. Um, and someone takes the reins of his horse and it's zoomed up right on this person's gauntleted hand with a male uh, mitten gauntlet and it's knitted mail. It's like, why didn't you at least use real mail for that close-up? And same thing here. If you're gonna have a close-up on someone, use the real mail there. Don't stick it on some guy over here, stick it on the guy who's right in front of the camera, okay? Because lots of people, even people who don't know much about armor, realize that that is not armor. That's someone's woolly sweater painted silver, and it looks stupid. And the helmet's quite good, okay? I'm not gonna criticize the helmet. The helmet's quite good. I don't know about cloaks very much but the mail is okay. Now we're going to look at something else, and that is the frequent use of this kind of armour in film and TV. And what is this kind of armour? I don't know how clearly you guys can see it on your screens, but it is essentially a series of plates that are um, kind of connected. They've got four holes at each corner, and they're connected by a thong, or they're stitched onto a fabric liner or whatever, okay? So it's a series of plates. Did this exist? Mm, I'm not going to say it didn't exist. I know that there have been types of armour that are a little bit like this. In fact, if we look at the, um, the famous terracotta warriors from China, they have armour that's kind of like plates riveted onto something, so it's kind of similar to that. But this guy's supposed to be an Anglo-Saxon in the late 8th century. This is supposed to be about 793, something like that. Okay? Um, did did they have that kind of armour in Anglo-Saxon Britain? Well, I can say this much, there's zero evidence for it, okay? Anglo-Saxons wore mail. Pretty much as simple as that. If they couldn't afford mail, then um, they maybe had forms of uh, padded armour, or they wore kind of, um, kind of buff coat type things. But generally speaking, their armour was mail. And in actual fact, if we look at things like the Bayard Tapestry, you have people in mail, the people who can afford armour have mail, and the people who can't afford mail actually don't have anything, they just have clothes, okay? And yeah, maybe they put thick clothing on to give themselves some uh, padding, uh, maybe they stuffed things underneath their clothing, but generally speaking, male was the armour. Male and a usually a conical type of helmet with a nasal protecting the nose, okay? That's pretty much standard armour right the way across northwestern Europe in this time. The only thing that was around at that period in the so-called Dark Ages that is a little bit similar to this 
and was more prevalent in Asia was what's called lamellar armour. Now lamellar armour is actually not this, okay? It superficially looks a bit similar, but with lamellar armour what you have is a series of plates which have a number of holes in the plates, they can vary, usually it's about six holes, sometimes eight holes, um, and those plates are actually sewn, more or less, together, okay? There is leather thonging that goes through those holes and attaches the plates to the other plates around it. Now what's important is that lamellar armour does not sit like this. In this, protect, in this, what we see here, all of the plates, and in fact you can see some on this person's arm as well, the plates sit next to each other, by and large. Okay? Now that's kind of silly, because think about it. Imagine I've got a sword and I thrust this guy in the chest. It's going to hit either a plate or a gap. Okay? If it hits a gap, he's stabbed. So that armour did nothing. Okay? If it hits a plate, what's going to happen? Either, uh, if he's very, very lucky, the plate will just resist the thrust. However, what will normally happen is when I hit that plate, it won't be absolutely dead centre, because the chances of that are very slim, and I'll hit that plate and it will tilt slightly. And as soon as that plate tilts, the point's going to slide off and into the gap again. So this is an absolutely moronic armour design, okay? because you've essentially covered yourself in gaps and you created an armour that will always channel the point of a weapon, or in some cases the edge of a weapon, into one of those gaps. So it's completely stupid. Lamellar armour, on the other hand, works like roof tiles with lots of overlapping layers. That has two good effects. One, it means you've got no gaps because everything overlays, overlaps everything next to it, like a shield wall. The other good effect of it is it means you've essentially got two layers on most of the armour because there's always overlapping layers and this is very important and something that people often overlook even with later period plate armour that you're not only looking at the thickness of one plate, very often you're looking at the thickness of two plates because plates are continually overlapping each other because they have to otherwise you'd be covered in gaps instead of covered in armour. Okay, so two things ready to sum up. One. Stop using knitted mail for close-up shots. It looks stupid, um, and if you've got real mail in your, in your show anyway, take that real mail and use it for the close-ups. Stick the knitted mail in the background. That's the first thing. Second thing is, please stop using this stupid plates kind of sewn onto a fabric with lots of gaps in. It looks really stupid and it's completely unhistorical. I would actually complain less if you took the knitted mail and put a knitted mail shirt on that guy, because at least then it would be, uh, it would be symbolic of armour that is correct for his time and period. That is not correct for his time and period. Okay, cheers guys, see you soon.